Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Judge Irving Kaufman. Sit down. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Kaufman and Attorney General Smith, Judge Webster, Chairman Thurmond and Rodino, other distinguished members of this commission, and ladies and gentlemen, we're here today to redeem this administration's promise to do all in our power to break apart and cripple the organized criminal syndicates that for too long have been tolerated in America. The power of these syndicates infects every part of our society. The cost in human and fiscal terms is incalculable. The climate of lawlessness that their very existence fosters makes this confederation of career criminals a costly and tragic part of our history. The reasons for the mob's success are clear. Its tactics and techniques are well known. Organizational cohesion and discipline, vows of secrecy and loyalty, insulation for its leaders from direct criminal involvement, bribery and corruption of law enforcement and public officials, violence and threats against those who would testify or resist this criminal conspiracy. All of these have contributed to the curtain of silence that surrounds the mob. Through the years, a few dedicated Americans have broken this curtain of silence and fought this menace. Their names are familiar, Prosecutor Thomas Dewey and Judge Samuel Seabury, Federal Agent Elliot Ness, Senators Kefauver and McClellan, Attorney General Kennedy, investigative reporter Don Bolas. But for too long, this fight has been left to a few dedicated policemen, prosecutors, journalists, or public officials, and too often, their efforts have resulted in only temporary gains against this menace. The time has come to make these gains more permanent to fully redeem the contributions of those who have waged a lonely battle against difficult odds. And the time has come for all of us to assist in the fight to break the power of the mob in America. It's often been said that no government can eliminate or end the illegal activities that provide much of the revenue and support for organized crime. Well, that is only true as far as it goes. I agree that government cannot stop or abolish the human impulses that make rac racketeering profitable. But I also believe we'd have the capacity to break apart and ultimately destroy the tightly knit regional and national networks of career criminals who live off these activities. Late last year, I announced a national strategy to expose, prosecute, and ultimately cripple organized crime in America. We're proceeding carefully with the elements of that strategy. Its final goal is the removal of a blot on American history that has lasted nearly a hundred years. As I've said before, few weapons against organized crime have proven more effective or more important to law enforcement than the investigations of the Kefauver Committee in the early 50s, the labor racketeering hearings of the McClellan Committee in the mid-50s, and the testimony of federal informant Joseph Alecci before a Senate committee in the 1960s. While some other commissions on crime have been appointed since then, each has been of short duration and had neither the time nor the resources to fully investigate the syndicate and lay out a national program for its elimination. I'm pleased to announce today that one of America's most distinguished jurists, Judge Irving Kaufman from the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, has agreed to lead a panel of 15 distinguished Americans from diverse backgrounds and professions in this pursuit. The purpose of this commission, which will last for nearly three years, will be to undertake through public hearings a region-by-region -region exposure and analysis of organized crime, to measure its influence and impact on American society and make judicial and legislative recommendations. Judge Kaufman has won widespread praise for his leadership of a number of important commissions on judicial and law enforcement problems. After I expressed my gratitude to him today in the Oval Office for taking this assignment, we were joined by the rest of the Commission members, including Senators Thurmond and Congressman Rodino. 
the chairman of the Senate and House Judiciary Committees, whom I'm especially pleased to announce have agreed to serve on this commission. And I want also to acknowledge the generous assistance of Justice Potter Stewart, who in addition to his other responsibilities has agreed to play a vital role in this endeavor. The membership of this commission shows strong geographical balance and it includes representatives of the judiciary, the Congress, the academic community, the private sector, and most important, law enforcement at all levels. We've been especially careful to include, and I believe this will be one of the commission's greatest strengths, a number of individuals who, though not widely known, have had extensive frontline experience with organized crime and are among the acknowledged experts in this field. I know that some will wonder why another commission is needed. They'll ask, aren't the Justice Department and the FBI and other law enforcement agencies damaging organized crime with their prosecutions? Don't congressional committees have the resources to conduct investigations? The answer to these questions is simply yes. Recent prosecutions have done the mob considerable damage. And yes, the Congress has, as I said before, done highly effective work with its investigations. But prosecutions by themselves can never dig out the roots of a problem that reaches so deeply into our society. Nor is the Congress, which has many other matters on its agenda, in a position to take responsibility for the business of exposing organized crime, its latest techniques and inroads. That's why this commission is so vitally important. One of the centerpieces in our strategy for a frontal assault on the mob in America. I believe this commission can expose to the American people the small group of career criminals who run the rackets, push drugs, corrupt policemen and public officials, and ultimately undermine the very basis of our democratic society itself. I believe this commission can mobilize the American people against organized crime by triggering the kind of public support that is vital for its final isolation and elimination. One reason we sought to include a broad cross-section of America in the membership of this commission stems from our firm belief that this battle can never be fully won at the federal level. Only when we work in our states and communities to put out of business the racketeering that fills the coffers of organized crime, only when we fully expose and isolate those groups or individuals who work or do business with organized crime can we expect a final victory. More than 23 years ago, as he sentenced defendants in a trial following the notorious Appalachian Conference in upstate New York, a federal judge noted that the defendants before him had not stumbled into criminal activity thoughtlessly or because of underprivileged backgrounds. He referred to them as hardened, sophisticated criminals who thought of themselves as a group above the law, men who placed loyalty to each other above loyalty to their country and its law-abiding citizens. He noted that these men, quote, wear two faces, unquote. That they cloak themselves in the respectability of charitable or civic organizations, even as they work to prey on innocent people and undermine the very moral foundations of our society. Judge Kaufman, your words were true then, and unfortunately, they are true today. I want you and the members of the commission here to know as you seek subpoena power from the Congress and go about the difficult tasks ahead of you, that you have my full support, the support of the Attorney General, who was instrumental in the formation of this commission, and the support of this entire administration. And I thank all of you here, and God bless you, and I am now going to sign the document that is necessary. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. President, I am honored to accept your invitation to serve as chairman of the Commission on Organized Crime. I believe your administration has demonstrated wisdom and courage in taking this important step. I know I speak on behalf of all our citizens and on behalf of the Commission when I thank you for your personal interest in this endeavor 
and the support which you have expressed for our mission. I pray we shall justify the confidence which you and the Attorney General have placed in us. During my 33 years as a federal judge, I've had a unique opportunity to observe the pernicious influence exercised by organized criminals. My experience has made me painfully aware not only of the heinous deeds perpetuated by these people, but of the devastating impact social, economic, and legal such evils have on our people and their institutions. Organized crime has spread its tentacles throughout our nation. It is parasitic and cancerous. We are all aware of the massive influx of narcotics into this country and of the staggering economic toll of this and other illegal activities. One estimate places the value of our drug traffic at $79 billion a year. This is more than the total profits of the country's 500 largest corporations. American citizens are victimized daily by the traditional staples of organized crime, and I refer to loan sharking and racketeering, gambling, prostitution, kicks, kickbacks for legal contracts, invasion of the pension funds of hardworking people, and in its most violent form, contracts for murder. Prison gangs grow in number and violence. We are confronted with a hydra-headed monster which takes on new shapes as we try to combat it. As criminal cartels become increasingly sophisticated, so the threat to our citizens assumes more dangerous forms. The fact of crime and the fear of crime, especially in its organized form, levy an unacceptable toll upon America's enterprise and upon the peace of mind of its citizens. A society which is to remain free cannot tolerate groups of individuals who profit by the coercion and destruction of others. The President has invited the Commission to probe this problem for its causes and to forge new and more successful strategies for a solution. We shall undertake this task, Mr. President, by diligently investigating and exposing the awesome power of organized crime to the American public. Conducting open hearings across the country, we shall reveal the threat criminal cartels pose to our nation's well-being. We will recommend strategies and legislation to make the business of organized crime unprofitable. At the same time, we shall be ever mindful of preserving the scrupulous fairness of our criminal processes and the treasured constitutional guarantees upon which they are based. We shall not witch hunt, neither shall we whitewash. There is no concern entitled to a higher priority than the threat posed by organized crime. The challenge is a great one, but its importance to our society is greater, and we shall leave no avenue unexplored in our quest, Mr. President. Thank you very much. I guess we can now go into the shade. <laughs> <laughs>